Moin Rabani, a co-editor at Jadalia. He joins us now from The Hague in the Netherlands. Moin, thank you so much for your time. Is there reason for Palestinians to be confident uh, for the next four years under Joe Biden's presidency? I wouldn't say confidence. I think one has to distinguish between um, Palestinians across the board being extremely relieved that Trump has been ousted from office because there was a widespread expectation that if Trump, if the Trump presidency continued, that um, annexation of West Bank territory and further Arab-Israeli normalization would be all but inevitable. And those two processes will probably be put on hold with a Biden presidency. I think the issue with Biden, assuming, of course, that there is going to be a transfer of power in the United States in the coming months, um, is twofold. The first is that, as your correspondent indicated, um, uh, the, the Palestine is not going to be a Middle East priority for the Biden administration. Secondly, and to the extent it is, I think the Biden administration will focus on more symbolic issues like restoring diplomatic relations with the Palestinians, uh, restoring funding to relevant UN agencies and, and uh, Palestinian development projects in the West Bank and so on, and not really dealing with, um, uh, with the substance. And so the concern must be that the Biden administration, to the extent that it assumes an active role here, will seek to reestablish, let's call it the bipartisan status quo that existed before Trump, which of course was disastrous for Palestinians. So the real challenge for Palestinians is whether they can um, uh, find the means to impose their own agenda and priorities on, on the American attempts to engage uh, with this issue in the coming years. And that's going to be a very tall order, not impossible, but very challenging. Yeah, absolutely. In other words, improve their own Palestinian relations with Washington rather than hope that possibly the new Biden administration will rein in some of the more excess policies of uh, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Very good point. How much do you think the Abraham Accords are already damaging the Palestinian cause and might do in the future? And what do you think the Biden administration might do about those? Uh, push them further forward and try to get possibly Saudi Arabia to sign up to them or kind of ignore them altogether and hope that they can be ignored? Well, as you may recall, um, uh, Biden, in fact, uh, very warmly welcomed these agreements when, when they were signed over the summer. And I, I see no reason why um, a Biden administration would in any way um, push back on it. You know, there, there, there's two issues here. First of all, I think that other Arab states will see um, less benefit in proceeding along this path simply because uh, the, the uh, Biden administration's agenda is in many ways different uh, than that of Trump. But, but I think the first concern would be that to the extent that differences begin to emerge between Washington and some of these Arab capitals, that they would uh, seek to ingratiate themselves with Washington by proceeding along similar lines as, as uh, the UAE and, and Bahrain did uh, over the summer. But I think the more significant concern has to do with what your correspondent identified as a key issue facing the Biden administration in the Middle East, namely Iran, and that once again, as with the Obama-Biden administration um, earlier uh, in, in the decade, will seek to resolve its differences with Israel over the Iranian file by paying Israel in Palestinian coin. Uh, and, and that, I think, should be uh, the primary concern. Once again, um, uh, at, at the end of the day, the issue is whether the Palestinians are going to continue conducting themselves like passive spectators to decisions made by others about them or begin to put their house in order and once again begin to proactively uh, develop and seek to implement their own agenda and priorities. Sure. OK. But again, in terms of uh, the impetus that uh, a Biden administration might provide for any potential resolution to the Israeli-Palestinian issue, um, if it's uh, Yemen, Syria, Iran, uh, Israel, 
the uh, big issues that Biden might prioritize because you're indicating you think he might push uh, the Palestine issue slightly on the back burner. Who can uh, Biden and his Middle East team get in the Middle East in terms of Muslim countries and allies there to play a more important role in helping the Palestinians? I mean, it surely is going to be a given that the Biden administration will provide uh, the funding that was held back by the Trump administration to help Palestinian refugees. Mm -hmm. Well, here again, I mean, I think we're talking more along, along the lines of symbolic rather than meaningful substantive changes. In other words, I think, um, unlike uh, during the Trump years, the Biden administration will view um, Palestinian Authority uh, budget and financial stability as, as conducive uh, to its own and Israel security in the Middle East, and will therefore not only itself restore funding to, for example, the UN Refugee uh, Agency for Palestine Refugees and Development Projects, but also encourage its Arab allies and other uh, countries, for example, in Europe, um, to uh, increase rather than reduce their fundings, uh, their funding to the Palestinians. But on, on the more substantive issues, such as, you know, occupation, obviously, um, uh, ending the occupation on uh, arresting and reversing uh, settlement, at least in the short term, I, I wouldn't expect um, any significant initiatives from Washington unless either the Palestinians manage to unsettle the status quo and force the Americans and the rest of the world to pay attention to them, or perhaps if Israel uh, significantly overplays its hand. Moin, thank you so much indeed for the analysis. Really appreciate it. Moin Rabani speaking to us from the Netherlands.